y'all. We're in the back. Say! Thanks so much for tuning in to watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week and tap the bell to get notified when new videos drop. My name is Erin Micklow and I'm here at Bay Fest in San Diego with the Outer Lights. Yeah, yeah. Introduce yourselves. Hey, I'm Chris Brennan. I'm Jeff Fredo, I play bass. Yo soy Roy Rivas, I play organ. <laughs> Me llamo Jesse Wagner, guitar <laughs> singer. Eric Alvarez, drums. Yeah, I'm so yes. happy to be back here with you guys. See what? Don't let me down. Can't hear y'all. We're in the back. well before Reggae Now came out. So I want to talk about that. How did it end up that you guys got on Pirates Press and how was it finishing up that album? It was your first new album in like, what, seven, eight years? Yeah, actually, I think you kind of helped out with the Pirates Press thing <laughs> at Punk Rock Bowling. But uh, uh, no, I mean, yeah, last time we talked was at that ska festival. Yeah. And we didn't even have a date or anything. And you're like, well, when's it going to come out? And I was like, I don't know. And, and uh, it's out. So Pirates Press. We've known Skippy, the guy that runs Pirates Press, for quite some time. Uh, I mean, goes way back to like, you know, 20 years ago. Yeah. And always been in touch with him on and off. He's uh, he's been going to Agrolite shows since the beginning. So it was just a perfect uh, match, you know. It was like, hey, we want to do a new record. Let's see if Pirates Press would be interested. And sure enough, he was. You know what I mean? And then you helped out also by uh, at Punk Rock Bowling getting us in contact with those guys too so yeah I remember cool. you guys saying that that you'd kind of been shopping for a bit because you wanted the right fit it wasn't just any label to release yeah. your album you wanted to have one that was the right fit and Pirates Press is kind of like to, to me it's reminiscent of like what Hellcat was back in its its heyday when they were really doing a lot of releases yeah and also they they understand like the scene that we come from yeah being like the whole skinhead mod root boy uh that whole like reggae scene, they, they understand that thing. So, you know, it was, yeah, it's like you said, it was a perfect uh, combination, you know, so. For sure. Did well for us. With finishing up that album, did you guys face any challenges with it aside from just label shopping? I don't know. Really? Not really. Challenges, huh? yeah. I don't think any challenges really, no. It all came natural, yeah, just like really getting in the studio, recording, coming up with some cool ideas and, and, uh, you know, just doing us, you know, nothing crazy, no new This was our first time direction. We, we recorded uh, completely at his studio, Robin's yeah. studio, which was really cool. So it was a lot more, uh, we weren't really on a time frame or, or any kind of like, we need to record all the record within eight days or else we owe all this extra money. It was cool being uh, the freedom of his spot and him taking the time. And yeah. So it felt, it was like easy going, you know. It was yeah. Like, and we didn't have anything where it was like the, the release date has to be here or there. We recorded the full album before we even had, had a label, you know, so it was it was cool. It was a nice, easy run, you know.
guys have been doing in all this downtime with the pandemic. I mean, it's it's really weird. This is my first festival back since before it, and it's like things are coming back. I mean, I know you guys kind of had shows sprinkled in here and there, you know, throughout the last year, but you know, not what it normally is for you guys. So, what were you guys doing? We did one release with the Slackers. It's pretty cool. We got uh, we got a little split. Um Little split, uh, yeah, split throwback for split, seven inch split 45 yeah. on a European label called Badasonic. Oh, awesome. Our friend Nico Leonard in Belgium. So we did a we covered a slacker song and they covered one of our songs, so that's available now. That's ba cool. Badasonic record split 45 with the slackers. That's awesome, yeah. Jesse. You started barber school, right? Yeah, I'm going to barber, barber school right now, so I'm uh, I have 1500 hours I have to complete before I take my state board exam. So it was just, I, I needed to figure something out of a, another way to make a living since the Agrolites weren't able to tour or anything. So yeah. it's a nice other, hopefully a, a nice set way to retire or have an income until I'm old. And well, and that's fun because you get to be like artistic and creative and yeah. like help people look good. And, and I get to tell them stories all day long. And <laughs> Yeah, people's ear off while cutting their hair. So. You're totally gonna be like that old Italian man barber that's just like, my name. I probably, I probably will be. Uh, so that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna be. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, what we, about? We've, we've done a couple weddings. <laughs> we haven't done. We did a couple weddings. That was fun. Agrolytes never really did a wedding before. Yeah. Maybe one, but that was kind of. We were doing little things here and there in our downtime, like private stuff and uh, the slackers thing. Other than that, I mean, Roger's been up to a lot. Jeff, you've been doing a lot. Yeah. Bunch of albums. He did uh, Opie's record, too. You know, he did a lot of works. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of recorded uh, works. Opie from uh, Long Beach Dub All Stars. Yeah. Uh, he's going to have a solo record coming out soon called uh, Sound I'm Sensation sweat, Volume bro. 1. And uh, I helped produce and write songs with him for it. So that was a lot of stuff going on, too. But. Yeah, I saw that on your Instagram stories. You guys were working on that for a while. It looks cool. Yeah, it was another thing, like, just fun. We were just having a good time to keep hanging out and writing songs together. And, uh, yeah, he got it picked up, and uh, he's going to get it released soon. So looking forward to that. That's exciting. And what about you guys? Roger, I saw, what, you're you're touring with Jason Mraz now, yeah? Yeah, playing with Jason Mraz. It's really cool. He's doing a reggae thing. We did a couple albums, recorded a couple reggae albums, and we're going to go on tour all of August. So rehearsal starts in about a week or so, and... Yeah, I'm stoked. It's a new uh, new journey over there, you know, a whole new scene, so so it's going to be fun for sure. That's exciting. And what about you, sir? <laughs> in the back. In the back. <laughs> Eric in the back. Ryan in the sun right now. Um, yeah, I've been, uh, I've actually been cooking professionally, so that's what I was doing um, this whole pandemic, which has been pretty cool. Um, oh, I love that. Yeah, so I've been trying that out, and little by little, gigs are coming back. My, my other band, uh, The Delirians, um, have some shows finally and we're gonna start touring again so and, and with these guys but but yeah that, that's pretty much what I was doing pretty much whole pandemic just just cooking a little bit yeah. hey that's you know exciting. what we should mention definitely Eric Alvarez plays drums in the Delirians amazing band and then Chris Brennan plays guitar as well with Arise Roots amongst other bands too so so we're lucky because we got to snatch these guys up for agros you know yeah. yeah it's a definite all-star situation well, so how does a lot of uh, sound engineering and has a studio too. Yeah, and really nice spot. That, a lot of that Opie record Chris, was done at Brennan's studio. Chris is like a call him the you know Swiss Army knife. He could do pretty much everything that there is. So can you talk about making that Opie record that's going to come out? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did. We they came into my spot. We did some of the rhythms. You know, we hit. Uh, we do some old school sound. We record on tape and stuff. And me and Roger uh, collaborated, and Jesse did a lot of producing and. Uh, you know, we just made it happen. Just threw it all down. We uh, did some mixes and yeah, it's cool stuff. It's all it's all in the family, you know, all yeah. all, all L.A. reggae family, you know, big well, stuff. I mean, that's the best way for it to be to kind of have a group of musicians. Like my friend Cameron behind the camera here and I were talking about that of like, you know, you kind of meet people and you all have your different projects, but you come together for one project and then you go off and do your other one. And it's kind of like you have your hand in multiple pots so that when one's not available or one's off doing something else, you can all be creating still. Yeah. And lots of subs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> somebody can make it, somebody else in the LA scene will Another term is band whores. We're all a bunch of <laughs> band whores. <laughs> 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 oh, that's how it has to be sometimes, you know? I mean, like, to get that many people together, to get, like, five freaking people together to play a show and simultaneously even just be here for this interview, it's a lot of coordinating. You know, walk inside that house, but I'm trying to the floor. Oh, yeah. 
things that you learned that you were most grateful for in this pandemic? It was like a fucking hard time for all of us. Like Jesse, you and I did a lot of phone calls of just like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just grateful that, yeah, I mean, it was a horrible thing, you know? And, uh, but uh, things to be thankful for is just a chance to be around my family more often than I was yeah. in the last 20 years. And uh, being at home with my wife and everything. Uh, you know, catching up on a lot of stuff that I haven't had the chance to catch. Even though it was a dreadful time, you know, with the whole world, it was uh, on a positive side, I guess. That was one yeah. of them was catching up on things. So. Yeah, to kind of get that time to reassess. Like, when it first popped off, I was scared personally, but I was a little bit grateful of, like, oh, okay, I can catch my breath. And then it was like, I'm so sick of this shit. Well, you could catch up on, like, um, <laughs> a lot of TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm all caught up with Mr. Belvedere yeah, and like Golden yeah. Girls and shit like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, so that reggae pod clash got me through some of the different See what times I mean? too. I mean, it, See yeah, what I mean? Rogers pod so there's clash the, definitely got us through so some moments. Like man, my like, grandma said, turn that frown creating, upside creating down. Creating our you know? own shows. Yeah, yeah exactly. Would that have happened, Roger, if it wasn't? Never. Hell no. I'm too lazy. Like, it wouldn't have happened. Dude, <laughs> everybody started making shows and doing it behind the scenes. Yeah, you know, that's true. I don't think we would have done if it wasn't for the scene. It's true. Yeah, big up that. Roger and Devin. Hot clash. Thank you, sir. Big shows. Man. Yeah. Well, so for anyone else, anything else that you had a moment where it's like, wow, I'm actually really grateful for this. I mean, uh, in general, just being grateful for staying healthy. I know people who got sick, some people lost family members. So just being able to stay healthy and appreciate how life. important, yeah, life and how important it is to be healthy and try to look out for each other, too. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it was a terrifying thing, you know, and everybody kind of had their own personal takes on it. Like the scenario with COVID was a lot like politics where it's like everybody has their beliefs and what they feel is right and what people should do and shouldn't do. And it's just like, oh, everyone just do what you think is best and be safe. Yeah. yeah. And so it was scary. It's a scary time. Um, but I'm so happy to be back here with you guys. I know. Yeah. We're back. Us too. We're <laughs> back. This is happening. Beautiful day in San Diego. Well, so today, what songs are you guys looking forward to playing the most? And why? Ooh. Well, being that it's a festival, we're going to try and do, like, over the years, kind of the greatest hits, quote unquote, like an assortment of songs that we feel really move the crowd the best. Yeah. Yeah. All killer, no filler. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a but I feel like that's always your guys' sets. I've seen you guys play 10 bazillion million times because in all honesty you guys are one of my favorite bands i listen to you guys most on sundays okay. it's a sunday band and for me you guys sunday is my favorite day of the week and it's like i'm feeling satellites take today. satellites to church <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> start we'll start early this week on saturday <laughs> yeah so i mean i feel like all your shows are always like that like you you play your classic songs and they never get old i love them yeah we got a lot of uh a lot of songs too it's like some albums we got like 24, 25 songs, mm. so it's hard to fit everything in 50 minutes, you know? And yeah. uh, so for today, yeah, it's we're just hitting the bangers, you know? The ones that we know yeah. for sure people have liked throughout the years. Yeah. But every time we play like headlining shows on our own, we'll always try to throw something new in and see if it sticks with the yeah. crowd, you know? Deep cuts. Have you heard of Tacos Put It On The Ritz? <laughs> what? Yeah. Taco, you All know the paper? artist Taco or no? no. Come on, no. Jeff knows. Jeff I know knows. for sure. Yeah. I got I got that on. Put wax. it on the Ritz. I got it on vinyl. Yeah. I really do. I'm sure the audience knows Taco. Put it on the Ritz. You have yeah. to look it up. It's okay. right there. It's Been borderline it. new wave punk. If Come on. You're blue okay. and you don't know where to go to. Why don't I'm you go? Yeah, yeah. Putting on Is the it Ritz. putting on the Ritz or living it's on put, the Ritz? Putting on the Ritz. Putting, putting. putting on the Ritz. Yeah. <laughs> it's Let's put some cheese on that Ritz and get it. There's yeah, a version. Yeah. There's bum, a version. Bum, bum, da, 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 yeah, we've been working da, da, on that one. There's a version of the song. We might in, uh, do taco tonight. I like Tacos how it's putting on the wrist. because I was I grew up Greek and. Oh, so he knows what's up. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, <laughs> we, we don't like the Istanbul. Oh, I got yeah. yeah. Used to be no, our, no, I, I know the story. Yeah. I know. Put it on the wrist. I know. I know. I know. That's. I know. That's history. Some dance. You tap deep into history right now. Okay. So to close out this interview, what do you guys have for the rest of 2021 planned? What is what's the deal like how are we gonna end this year hopefully in something positive well uh with the band we're gonna play with uh roy ellis so we're gonna do a date at uh, alex's bar in long beach oh, nice. as roy ellis's band we have a tour lined up with our friends the slackers from new york city uh we're gonna do like a little w west coast run and an east coast run in december and uh we're working on a couple other shows throughout the year that we can't mention just yet but yeah. uh, some things that are in the works 
So. Cooking. Cook, yeah. Cooking like Eric Alvarez. Yep. Well, that's exciting. Well, so everyone follow them on social media. I'll include that in the corner of this video so you can keep up with their tour dates. And I want to say thank you guys so much for taking the time today. Oh, I love yeah, you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Sure, we love the show. We are the Agrilites, and you are watching Last Rockers TV. Hey. Ha. One, two, three.